am I gonna start this? What's up, people? So, my name's Cole. Um, if you haven't seen me before, that's because this is my first YouTube video, so don't scrutinize me too hard. <laughs> so basically, just to kind of start off where we're going with this uh, first video, uh, I picked up a kayak probably about a month ago. I've never owned a kayak before, so it's my first new dip into kayak fishing. So I just bought a cheaper little kayak. I got a Lifetime Tamarack, one of the cheaper ones. I got it at Walmart for I think like 280 bucks. Uh, I got a couple mods in store for it. Uh, I've already got an anchor trolley put on there. I went with the Yak Attack anchor trolley. Um, got a stadium seat. Uh, we're waiting on Amazon to get some pad eyes because I saw another YouTube video. I'll link that in the description here. But the biggest thing coming up here is gonna be something we're gonna go pick up here in a couple hours once we get finished up with work. And that is going to be this boy right here. Um, yeah, so this is the Humminbird Piranha Max 4 fish finder. I have not seen any videos of this particular video. Uh, oopsies. I haven't seen any videos of this particular fish finder on a kayak. Um, but what they're doing right now is they've got it for a hundred bucks, which is pretty good. And that is a mail-in rebate. So basically you buy this thing and you get a free gift card. And they've got one in stock and they've got the rebate. So it's like 30, 40 bucks cheaper than the other ones I've been looking at. I've been looking at like the Hook 2, the Lorentz one. I've been looking at whichever the smaller Garmin one was. I figure I'm not going to be the only person to take advantage of this deal. I'm not gonna be the only person to put one on a Tamarack kayak. So I'm like, you know what? Let's try it, I'll be a guinea pig, why not? Okay, well, you guys don't know this, um, but it is a few hours later. Um, finally done toiling for the day. And uh, we are gonna go and pick this thing up. Come on. What do you wanna drive? Let's get over. So we just made it to Gander. We're gonna go pick that thing up. I didn't know this till the last time I came here, but apparently they're dog friendly. So I brought my dog and he's gonna come in there with me. We're gonna go pick it up. I don't wanna be that weird guy that's like videotaping while I'm in the store. So I will be back once we acquire the goods. Got it, we just picked it up right there. Piranha Max 4. Now we just need to figure out how we're gonna power it and how we're gonna rig it, and then we're good to go. So let's head back to the house and um, take a closer look at it. Okay, so first official unboxing here. Um, so here is the whole unit in the box, everything, I haven't touched it. That's what it comes like in the packaging. I guess like my first initial impression is I kind of expected it to be smaller, you know, especially because if it's got just barely over a four inch screen, you know, diagonal, you know, I mean, that's still a pretty good size screen, but like this bezel is actually quite a bit wider than I was expecting. Ah, there we go. This is the box open and here is the unit itself. Um, like I said, a little bit bigger than I was expecting. Not a big deal, whatever. Um, the buttons are here. The buttons are actually pretty nice. They feel feel quality, I don't know. They don't feel like anything cheap. This looks like it's some kind of mounting bracket. I don't know if this is, this looks like it's for the transducer actually. So that's how the transducer bolts into that. Set that aside. This looks like the unit, uh, this looks like the mount for the unit here. It attaches to the surface and it looks like it has like a swivel attachment here. That's pretty cool. I don't know what this is. <laughs> okay, so I pulled these out separately before, but now that I've got them separated, I realize it's two things. So here's your power cable. Looks like this is for the, you know, whatever custom wiring you wanna do. Camera's out of focus, but whatever. And then this is the end that plugs into the unit. And then right here, we have the transducer. Now, one thing about the transducer I noticed is the cable is actually pretty long. So that gives us a lot of flexibility with like, 
how exactly we want to set it up or where we want to route that through. So that's that's good news, especially because I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it. I just, all I know is I wanna have the transducer if I can in the water, but in like an inconspicuous place, I don't damage it or whatever. Um, but yeah, so initial impression, you know, like I can't test it functionality wise quite yet, but seems pretty high quality. It's got everything there. Cables are long enough to give you a little bit of room to experiment with different setups and give you a little extra leeway. So it's perfect. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the hardest part of the entire equation, and uh, that's waiting, waiting till we can work on it. Um, so today's Thursday. Uh, I got one day of work left. Um, going to probably pick it up Saturday morning, take a look at the kayak, see how we're going to go about rigging it up. I still got a little bit more research to do on how exactly I can power this thing, because I'm not going to lie. I know very, very little about electrical stuff, so I'm gonna have to try to figure that part out and just be able to go take a look at the kayak up close and see how exactly we wanna approach it. Hi, <laughs> so spoiler alert, it's not Saturday. Um, it's actually Friday. So the reason I said Saturday initially is because I was supposed to go to the gym today, but the, uh, the executive council of me decided that um, I'd rather work on my kayak than go to the gym. I'm gonna go pick up the battery, go pick up the electrical stuff, you know, the fuses and things like that, because it's required to have a fuse. So I'm gonna go get a little like inline fuse thingy bob and then get the electrical stuff. Yeah, so I'll check in here a little bit later tonight once I pick up the stuff. And um, once we do that, we're gonna get started on the install process and see how she goes. All right, so it's now later. <laughs> do you like my, uh, you like my mask? So uh, yeah, we're gonna go pick the stuff up and um, and then yeah, we're gonna start the install. Okay, so we're here in the garage finally. Um, here is the kayak. Uh, just getting ready to start up here. Uh, we got our battery here. It's gonna be our little power supply. Got our wires, got red and black. And so the transducer mount, I'm gonna try to get a little creative with. So basically, um, I saw a guy on YouTube, he did something like this. Now this is called a PVC riser. So what I did is I got the cap for it and I also got the pipe here. This is a four inch pipe and this is a, I believe it's three quarters of an inch thick. All right, so first piece to this puzzle is gonna be seeing if we can get this PVC pipe to fit through that scupper hole. Whoa, okay, cool. So that was a very tight fit, but that actually, that's actually pretty good. Go a little bit deeper, that's what she said. <laughs> See that little thread right there? Um, essentially what the goal is, is we're gonna take that, drill a hole through it, and then run either a bolt or a zip tie, and the transducer will live below that. And that's actually pretty slick. That's a nice looking, uh, nice looking deal. I don't wanna make any modifications directly to this, because I guarantee you that this is set up much better than anything I will be able to do with this. Three days later. Wow, hello. Uh, so you may have noticed, uh, the scene has abruptly changed. Uh, we have some stuff going on still like we were before, and we have this little guy right here. So if we do this right here, that is a dead, dead battery. <laughs> okay, so to kind of confirm this theory, uh, got the battery hooked up, wires are all plugged in. This is actually the receiving end of the fish finder. And look here, this is all the proof I needed. So I've been sitting here confused for quite a bit longer than I would like to admit. Um, but I guess, you know, I can see if I can make it to Walmart before it closes or we have to pick this up in the morning. This is going to be edited to where you will find out which option I do. So let's go from there. Yeah, so I just ordered a pizza and I just got done locking up the garage. So I still want this project to be fun. So I'm just gonna wait till tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. So we are back out here by the garage. Um, I haven't been videotaping this stuff at all, but I've been doing a couple errands running around town. Uh, went and tried to get a new charger. Also went to get to swap the battery out. Neither one of those worked. Um, so more of the story, the wild game, whatever batteries from Walmart, those are crap. <laughs> so don't buy those. So what I did is I went to an actual battery shop, bought a name brand battery, and I got an actual charger for that. Um, and I plugged the fish finder in, 
and fired right up like no joke side note this battery cost as much as the battery and the charger i bought before but sometimes you know you get what you pay for here's the fish finder now push the button it just fires up immediately so that's good to know that our wiring wasn't bad so let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this okay so if you skip ahead in the video we're gonna go ahead and get started with the actual install now we've gotten around all of our issues with the battery and everything and now we can actually get started on adding it in so while i was at the store returning the old battery i picked up this box here i'm thinking that this could be something we could just stick inside of the watertight storage Okay, cool. So my connections aren't super weak, so that means that we were able to plug this part in. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of excess wire. Uh, you know, I'm thinking eventually I might do something a little bit more, you know, significant and like tap into here and also get some watertight sealant. For the time being, I don't bring a whole lot of water into the boat, so I, you know, I guess I really don't need this to be particularly watertight more so splash resistant. We've got the fish finder on here just to see that our connection's solid. So what we're gonna do is we've been kind of tinkering around with this. Um, I think I'm gonna probably just use Velcro for the time being because you know you really don't know how you want things positioned until you're out on the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a Velcro strip on top of my lid here and this thing's gonna live right on top of there. So I didn't videotape this part. This is what we call impromptu engineering. Uh, I got the bracket on there. I'm thinking I'm gonna bolt the transducer onto the bracket. And then what we can do is run the cable up through that way. I was having a hard time getting it to stick in place with the zip ties. So I'm gonna actually try to rig it on the bracket to see if that helps. Cool, so I think that that does that. Um, gotta try to tilt it forward a little bit here. So it's either too far up or too far down. Let's go too far down. Perfect, that's where we're gonna keep it. Um, this is actually very snug in the scupper hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave it like that. And we're gonna run this back up through here. All right, sweet. So now that we got everything pretty much wrapped up here, Let's get everything tidied up here, tucked in place, get the wires wrapped up, put away, and uh, see how she looks. Okay, so here's an idea of what she's gonna look like all cleaned up. Um, got everything rigged up here, got the transducer coming through this hole. Got the wires like just kind of loosely put in their place here. And there's just gonna be a couple exposed wires, but this isn't gonna be enough to really break my heart. You know, honestly, I think this looks pretty good. Especially, I didn't have to drill a single hole into the boat. You know, power this thing up right there, and she's good to go. Okay, so I did actually have one other surprise with this video. Um, I wanted to initially include this with the video itself, but I ran out of storage on my phone, so I'll just show you the finished product. Okay, so that surprise here was the Stadium Steet install. So we got this mounted here. I got these uh, pad eyes from Amazon. So basically all we did was we screwed these in here and then we zip tied them directly to the bottom of the frame. This is the Ozark Trail Stadium seat, same exact one you get from Amazon. Uh, I like it because it's a little bit wider and man, I, I just sat on it. I, I put something underneath it so I didn't rip my transducer off, but man, it makes such a big difference. So I am I'm very, very happy with the results and I cannot wait to test this thing out. So with that, I mean, that's gonna be the video. Um, so yeah, we ran into a couple uh, bumps in the road along the way with the uh, battery, stuff like that, storage issues, whatnot. Um, but yeah, so this was fun. A lot more work than I expected. It goes into editing and recording and doing all this stuff. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you wanna see some more content, you know, leave a comment, subscribe, whatever. And uh, yeah, so we will see you guys soon. And we'll see you with this thing on the water next time, so. Thanks, guys.